43 years. It was about 45 years ago that a group of Christians gathered in the earliest days of Baal, and they asked the bishop, uh, the Episcopal bishop of the state of Colorado, if he would not mind to gather in a congregation in the Vail Valley. The bishop asked this group of Christians what name they wanted to have. And famously, they looked through the Gospels and they found a story about Jesus hanging out with his very best friends in an intimate and beautiful way on top of a mountain. They went to camp out. God had something entirely else in mind. And so these Christians came to the Bishop of Colorado and said, we'd like you to name our church the Church of the Transfiguration. Yes, I know it's hard to fit onto checks. Which is where we got the name ECOT from. First Bank will be take a check for ECOT because someone complained years ago. God bless you. <laughs> For 43 years, this church has been doing what we're doing today. Coming to one of the most beautiful places on the planet. Forgetting all of the distractions and obstacles of our lives. To breathe in fresh, clean air. To be with the best people you've ever met in your life and to thank God for the many blessings that he has bestowed upon us. Facebook gets a little unimportant with a view like this, don't you think? We've come up 43 years in our church to hear God say in the only voice that God, the only command that the Father gives us in the entire New Testament directly to us, Listen to Jesus. Listen to him. That's it. That's all we've needed. And we have striven with every energy that we can produce to listen to Jesus and to follow where his voice leads us. Unlike Peter, some people got an idea for real estate in the mountains. Peter was never able to get his license and build those three gated communities. You did. It's okay. God's still speaking. We don't need a cloud or terrifying, you know, lightning today. We've had that in years past, but not today. What we have is a beautiful moment to watch a congregation claim a priest. You see, because a priest without a church, without an altar, without a congregation, without Bible studies and hospital visits, without the privilege, the supreme privilege of standing behind an altar and looking into your faces and sharing with you the gift that Jesus gave to his very best friends, an altar is like a fish with no water. And when Emily shared with me that she had never been installed formally outside of seminary after ordination, I knew what we were going to do, and I knew where we were going to do it. I actually knew the minute that God was calling Emily to our church. I don't know if she remembers this or not. We had a call team get together. It was kind of like searching for a treasure, which we're doing right now. <laughs> we had a hard time finding the right person. All of a sudden, two people presented themselves. We had a wonderful interview with the first one, a good friend of mine, by the way. And we went up to Carolyn Mormon's house, had a great dinner, and it was very warm. And I thought, wow, this is, this is, uh, this is good. We've got a good option. We'll meet the second person. Emily? And her family came, and uh, we had the same dinner, same setup at Carolyn Mormon's house. I walked into the kitchen, and unlike the first time, Emily had already been there. You know, she was visiting with everybody. She can work a room really well. 
She had a she had a glass of uh, scotch in her hand. <laughs> And she looked at me, she held up the glass, she said, hi, what are you drinking? I thought this was going to go fine. She talked to each and every person in that room that night. She listened to them and I listened to her do it. I knew when I walked out that night that we had a candidate that God could use to bless our church. It's an amazing thing for a priest to pull up stakes, move across the country with young children to come to us. I hope you're as amazed at that as I am. It's an amazing thing to watch God put a priest at full sail in her ministry. And it's been a privilege to be Emily's ministry partner and colleague. What we do after the baptism today is give Emily a series of gifts. Don't anybody get excited, half of which she already owns, okay? But they're symbolic gifts, and I want you to pay attention to what they are. Because we're giving her everything she needs to do the ministry that we're asking her to do. She needs tools in the toolbox. They're lined across the front of the altar. And she needs them because God is calling her, in my opinion, to help take us into the next chapter of our life as a congregation. You are too large for one priest and one deacon now. We need a staff and lay leaders. We need a great vestry. We need excellent wardens, we need a superb new treasurer, and we need an excellent assistant rector. Our goal was to call the best priest available, and friends, I've been waiting six months to tell you, we did. But before we do that, we have a baptism. You hurt me because... Mother and children, so cool. And you know what? Before Emily gets her gifts, they're going to get their gifts. Because when you're baptized, the prayer book says you're being ordained into ministry. Steve and, and Mark in his retirement, and Emily and I, will take care of the collared stuff. We take care of you so that you can take care of the world. People ask me all the time, are you the minister of the Episcopal Church? And I say what? No. 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 I'm the priest. You're the minister. You change the world, we'll take care of you. How's that for a deal? 43 years God has been using this church to transform marriages, families, children, broken relationships, suicidal people, people that will put God-awful amounts of everything in their bodies and wonder when God's going to show up. 43 years, God's been saying to all of us, I've got better for you. In baptism, God gives us all the tools that we need to minister. The clergy get all the flashy stuff. You get all the important stuff. We're going to watch God give to this beautiful family today everything they need to walk out of here as living Gospels. Gospels are not in books. Gospels have legs and arms and eyes and ears and mouths to share. They get everything they need today. And we are so privileged to watch that be in the right order. Baptism first second and that's the way right and that's the way it should be friends I want you to welcome mother Emily and be gentle with her today but I want you to welcome her she's one tough customer as you're gonna see and she needs to be for us don't you think we ain't easy I want you to welcome a beautiful baptismal family but most important I want you to take a deep breath 
and stand in the line of our mothers and fathers who have been sitting where you're sitting now and thank God for the gifts that we have been given to minister in the name of Jesus to listen to him on the mountain. How many churches get this, may I ask? Aren't we blessed? Let's continue our service and watch God do some amazing things in giving the gifts that we all need to minister.